Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at a game called 13 Minutes at the Speed of Light. Swindoll with the artwork by Bethany Vaughn. It's a made for Game Crafter game and it's currently available on the Game Crafter for about $39.99. It plays one to five players in 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, it's not an overly complex game, it is kind of fun. There's quite a bit of tension in this game. Um, you know, the worker placement's kind of fun, the tension builds up as, as the minutes count down. And I was, I was, I pretty, you know, enjoyed this game because um, it's a little bit different. Uh, a little bit, um, you know, more fun, and you've got that that timing tension as far as the worker placement goes. And it can be asymmetric in that there's four astronauts that are trying to survive 13 minutes at the speed of light, while space itself is trying to kill them or destroy the spaceship. Uh, we'll show you, see how that plays out in a minute. So let's take a look at the board, and we'll see what we got. So as you can see, the board itself is made up of these cards, and we've got two cards on the end. We've got the hazard deck space, and we have the engine discard space. And I'll explain that in a minute. Then we've got the five modules of the actual spaceship itself. We have a command module, and the command module's special ability, when there are workers in it, is to upgrade the various CPUs in the modules themselves. So if we take a look at one of those CPU tiles, we'll see that the CPU tile has a single side and a double side, which lets it do uh, two actions per turn instead of one. There's a sensor module, and the sensor module special ability is to look at wild cards that come off of the hazard deck uh, to know um, where that location is going to occur from that particular hazard. The habitat, its special ability is to generate more oxygen and be able to put extra oxygen in a module. Because you can only have as many workers in a module as you have oxygen spaces in that module. Different hazards can occur, for example, a leak that may remove oxygen from a particular module, in which case you might want to put some back. Right? We have the reactor module. Now the reactor module, what you're able to do is put various types of shields in locations. Uh, to help defend the parts of the ship against the hazards from space. And then you've got the engine compartment. And the engine compartment special ability is to get space to either discard one of the cards from its hand that it's planning to ambush you with, or discard, discard one off the top of the hazard deck. So when we have that set up, we'll shuffle up the hazard deck, and I've been shuffling this for a little while, I'm just going to give it a cut. And then we will place the hazard deck in the hazard module. And before I do that, I want to show you that this game actually has a tutorial mode where you'll flip over to the blue side of these cards and you won't use the trick cards or the wild cards in the tutorial module. But in the standard games, you also have the trick and the wild cards in there. So we'll place the deck on there and make sure we have the wild cards handy. The wild tiles will let space determine which type of hazard happens when they draw a wild card. And we're also going to draw four astronauts. But let me tell you about the deck first. Now, the hazard cards themselves, they're different types. There's tricks, poison, wilds, leaks, and fear, and surge. So of these five types, each type has a location on the back of it. So as space takes these cards, it's going to determine, oh, I want to use these three cards to ambush the players with, 
and it knows that the fear location is the sensor, the surge location is anywhere on the ship, and the trick location is in the command module. So the way that works out is that if you look at, at the board, each section has a minute. One, two, three, four, five, so on, up to 13. This determines what kind of a hand size and how much power that space is going to have. Because it says that the hand size in the first minute is six and it can play three ambush cards. And if we look at minute five, for example, the hand size is 10 and space gets to play five ambush cards. When we get up to minute 12 and 13, like minute 12, their hand size is 12 and space gets to play six ambush cards. So space's capabilities get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. And I'll show you how to play those in just a minute. As the rest of the setup, we choose four astronauts. In this case, I've pre-chosen these four with their four standees. But there are up to 12 astronauts you get to play. And they range from engineers and doctors and welders uh, to even one called the mystic. Now these are the health tiles for, the, for them. The health tiles themselves, if you have a look at them, it'll say fear flips over here and poison slips. Now what happens is if a worker is alone in one of the modules and a fear card is played for that module during the impact phase, this worker will be affected by fear. When we do that, we flip over the tile, and now it says fear kills. The second time that worker is alone in a module and a fear card affects that module, that astronaut will die and go away. If we look at this, it also says poison slips, and poison is physical damage. So some of the poison cards we might get, if a worker is in a module, and that module gets poisoned by space, we're going to move them down. And if it's caught in it's the workers over here and the reactor module and the reactor module gets poisoned, if the engineer was the worker in the reactor, we're going to slide him down again. Now what's going to happen is as space is playing their ambush cards, the ones that are left over from their hand, they're going to discard. For this turn, they're going to discard here. This minute, they'll discard here. This minute, they'll discard here. And at the point that a worker is on a minute and space discards cards at that point, that will kill this astronaut. So that's how an astronaut can die from poisoning. Space's job is to kill all four astronauts. The astronaut's job is to get at least one of them to survive 13 whole minutes in space. So if we were to set this up, there are three phases. There is the ambush phase, where space draws cards, decides which ones it's going to play. There's a defend phase, where the astronauts get to place their workers on an available oxygen module. And if a, there's no oxygen in a module, you can't place a worker there. And then they will, like if we had the uh, physicist in the command module, for example, we could attach the CPU to that oxygen and that worker on that oxygen with the CPU attached to it means you can use the special ability of the command module. Right? In which case we could upgrade a CPU. So that's what the workers are going to do. They're going in the defend phase, they're going to decide where they're going to position themselves on an available oxygen module. And you will either use the special ability of the particular astronaut. Um, and they range from stuff like the the psychic or the sorry the mystic is immune to fear, uh, to welders being able to fix um, leaks or the um, engineer being able to fix a CPU or save a CPU. Uh, but determined that's all determined by what happens with these hazard cards. And then once the workers are placed, once the abilities have been played. Then you go into the impact phase. And your impact phase is basically the phase where you deal damage. So uh, you'll the space cards will be played out. You'll turn them over to find out which modules it affects. You will check to see if there's any shields on those modules. And then you will apply the effect 
to the module and to any astronauts in those modules. So for example, if we were in minute one, space would get a hand of six cards. During the ambush phase, space is going to take these six cards and it's going to look at them and say, well, where do I want to want to play these? Now, this will obviously not be shown to the astronauts, but in this case, if I was space, I would choose poison everywhere, um, wild everywhere, and what the heck, fear everywhere. Let's just scattergun this. The three cards I didn't use would become the discard for that, that minute. And then I would pl place these cards face down, and that is set up for ambush. Now with a wild card, space has to determine what type of, of uh, hazard that is. Poison, fear, surge, leak. So he takes one of these tiles, you determine which one you want to do, and I think I'm going to go for fear. And then you'll place that tile face down on the wild card. So now we're set up, the ambush phase is done, and now it would be the, the astronaut's turn. So during the defend phase, the astronauts are going to decide where they're going to go. And to do that, you're going to place the workers. Now, the sensor module's special ability, as I mentioned before, is to look at where this wild card's going to happen. So I think we're going to want to place at least one worker there and attach that CPU to that worker so we can do that. Um, uh, now, when you place the worker, you'll, you'll use that worker's special abilities. The physicist, physicist's special ability is if the ambush uh, has more than one wild card, you force space to mark one with a hazard token. That's already been done in this case since we only have one. Uh, so his ability wouldn't apply, but he can still use the sensor's ability. The sensor's ability is to look at where this is going to happen. So if we look at where it's going to happen, it's, oh, it's all over the ship. Okay, well, that's not going to help too much because we don't know what this is. So then you would continue placing. Says, okay, well, we're probably going to want to upgrade a CPU. We're going to want to... Um, I would want to make space discard, so we'll put a worker on the engine module, attach a CPU to that. And I know I have a fear coming up. I don't necessarily want to lose anybody, uh, so I might buddy some people up. So, okay, well, I don't want to lose him, so you two will sit in there. That will pretty much make them immune to fear. Then when you move into the impact phase, you turn these over. I say, okay, so the poison happened all over the ship. Uh, we don't have any poison shields in place, so everybody would get poisoned and move down. Fear happens all over the ship. Well, there's two people here, so they're immune to fear. But each of these, the physicist, I'll, I'll lay these down so you can see them on the camera, the physicist and the savant, they would each have one fear on them now. And then the fear module that happened all over the ship we took care of, so we got two of those. Well, that's going to happen to them again. But... Lucky for us, in this game, damage does not stack. So the two fears actually will only happen once. You won't fear them twice. We already took care of the poison. So we've done all of our impact. And we've, we've, we've finished with that. So we'll finish our discard. These will go away. And now we set up for the next phase. We go back to the ambush phase. Minute two, hand of eight, use four. So space would draw eight cards, lay out four of them for the ambush. Um, then you'd defend, you'd take your workers back, uh, place them in new places if you want, uh, you know, run the gamut again, go through impact again. And it continues like that until either all the astronauts are dead or you make it through minute 13 with a couple astronauts alive. And that's pretty much how it plays out. Um, it's not hard to get a hold of. You know, it, it it's, plays pretty well. Uh, it's a fun little game. It doesn't take that long. Once you get the hang of it, it's probably closer to the 30, 45 minute mark than it is the 60. 
Um, you know, we played it a few times through, and I think we won one, lost four, actually. <laughs> but um, it's all right. It's a fun little game. So that's the how to play portion. Uh, stay tuned for the opinion portion of the game. All right, so what did I think of 13 Minutes and at the Speed of Light? 13 Minutes is a, it's a nice game. It's easy to carry around, and it's, it's a decent little worker placement game. It's not worker placement in the traditional sense. You're not building an engine. You're not collecting resources. It's a turn-by-turn -turn worker placement, and it's a, you know, you versus space, which makes it interesting. Um, I always like space themes. Sp well, I pretty much like most themes. <laughs> But it can, you think, oh, it's going to get a bit samey, samey. I mean, there's, I can think of it, you know, no reason where space wouldn't want to use the whole of ship cards as often as possible. Now, granted, there are 66 cards in this deck, you know, so you're not going to draw them all the time. But still, uh, they seem to come up often enough where it was a bit challenging and you could pretty much blanket the ship. With four astronauts, if there's a lot of fear cards coming up and you buddy them up each time, well, that, that, that's a choice you have to make. That's going to limit uh, how many things you can do or how many different abilities you're going to get out of the ship modules, which is an interesting choice. Uh, you know, I'm sure Ryan thought about that when he, when he put this together. Um, would I buy this? Yes. Would I play it again? Yes, I would. Um, it's not the 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 you know prime event game of a gaming day uh, i'd play this early kind of as a warm-up you know it plays one to five players if you want to play a co-op game you're basically going to pull cards off the top of the deck and just kind of lay them out and a solo game plays the same way so when it says one to five players it's kind of an interesting number um you, with five players, you can always play one as space, and then each of the other four players each gets an astronaut. If there's four players, one could play space, and three people could be astronauts, and two per, you know one person plays two astronauts. So it, it can kind of be kind of weird uh, when it comes to how many astronauts are played for uh, each game. So I think the one to five is a bit interesting choice as far as player count goes. I mean, you can make it work, uh, but it, it's not set up to have three astronauts or two astronauts or four astronauts. I mean, you know, only four astronauts. So um, take that for what it's worth, really. Overall, yeah, I like the game. Um, I, I enjoy it. Uh, I'd play it again. So from that perspective, it's Rocky approved. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this overview and then the... the review of 13 minutes at the speed of light you can pick it up on the game crafter it's a nice indie title um, and we hope to bring you more games that you may not have heard of before see if we can spread the indie game love so i'm rocky for craven studios and as always make awesome games.